Hello and welcome back to part three. Three? Why am I holding up two? Why am I holding up two twos? Hi! Welcome back to part three of our gameplay of I Am Dead. Uh, I'm really excited to keep going with this. We've met Peach, we met Val, and we're on the way to see someone called Ogden Beckett. So I'm really excited about this. Thank you so much if you watched part one and two. I really appreciate you. And I'm excited to see where this is going to go and who's going to be the custodian, because it has to be someone, right? Um, anyway, let's get right into it. Ogden, we're coming for you. Maybe we're not coming for the Grinkins at this moment. Maybe we'll find one or two, but I'm not, I'm not concerned about the Grinkins right now. They'll be okay. Old Town, ooh. So Ogden next, eh? I'll be glad to see him again. Mm. His music always hurt my ears, but he was good at chin scratches. <laughs> oh, lovely guy. Oh, look, the ferry's coming in. There'll be loads of tourists all over this quayside soon. Well, I suppose they won't get in our way much anymore, eh, girl? <laughs> Aww. Ooh, Ogden looks cool. I like his hat. Ogden was a talented multi-instrumentalist, leader of the Shelmerson Silver Band, and King Cricketer. As a young man, he went to live in New Zealand, but returned to marry his childhood sweetheart, Sally Mapes. That's very sweet. Cool. So there's just four memories here. I did see a place, though, called Time for Toast, and I'm very into that. Cool. Um, uh, this toast room serves dry toast. Dry toast! Almost exclusively for the fish folk. Oh. There are some people who are legitimately fish. That's pretty cool. Until they came up on the land, fish people had never eaten dry food, and they adore it. Toast is their absolute favorite, and is the main reason the fish folk integrated with the economy and practices of the dry ciders. It is said that until Toast, they had no interest in money or clothes. So Toast changed it all, didn't it? Amazing. Toasty! He's really cute. I would love, like, a toasty shirt. Oh, it's the lunchtime rush. I can just look at the lunchtime rush. They're all cute. They all have smiles on their face. Coral, Al, Tetra, and Krill. Can I get inside here now? I love time for toast. I would be there every day. I'd bring my own butter, probably. Like... Oh no, not this guy. Hello, ready for some fun? Oh, uh, hello. I'm Mr. Whitstable. Welcome to Mr. Whitstable's <laughs> riddle game. A riddle? We don't have time for this. Let's get back to work. Mr. Whitstable just wants you to enjoy yourself, solve my riddles, and achieve true happiness. Well, these do seem kind of fun. <laughs> Whatever, Morris. Oh, Sparky. Um, okay, Mr. Um, Whitstable, uh, what do I have to do? <laughs> Hooray! Just select one of my fiendish riddles, then go off and find the object it's referring to. Easy. Well, actually, okay. really hard. <laughs> Wait, are they really hard? Oh, no. This is like Grinkins all over again. I'm flashing back to like an hour ago when I tried to get that badminton racket. Okay. Event boards. Oh, okay. Houdini cephalopod, royal tuber, the worms, the wizard seagull. The wizard seagull cut sounds epic. So I'm looking for a wizard seagull. Does that seagull have one eye?
Wait, do I only have a certain amount of time? Do I only have a certain amount of time? It's going down, like, very fast. Looking for a seagull, looking for a seagull, looking for a seagull. I don't think he said it was timed, but it looks like... I'm sorry, Mr. Whistable. Th these riddles are really hard. They are hard. Maybe unfair, too. But hey, if you don't have what it takes to become a riddle master, Morris. Wait. I, I, I'm sure I can figure them out. I didn't know it was time. Okay, Morris, I'll give you another chance. You'll have to go back and choose which riddle you want to look for, and then think really hard about what the riddle could possibly be referring to. Oh, will do. Oh, thanks, Mr. Whistable. I, I won't let you down. <laughs> okay, so I didn't realize that it was uh, timed, but you know we're we're okay. Is there something called a wizard seagull? I love the bee felt. I love it so much. Hello, bees. Oh my god, they're so cool. I think bees are the coolest. I, w I could never be a beekeeper, ever, but I admire the work that beekeepers put in. And this cat. <laughs> I like how it has a cat door on the back as well. What's in here? More bees! Marbies. I can't. They're just really cute. Okay, let me get out of here. We got things to do. People to see. There is a guy over here. Hello, guy. Can I talk to you? Ooh. Simon Grund, captain of the Shalmerston cricket team. Okay, cricket captain. It was the day of the island cricket match out on the volcanic sand spit. We had lost to Appledore for the past three years and it was my first year as captain. I didn't want another loss on my watch. Ogden had just come back from New Zealand and told me he'd be up for it. I wasn't sure. I remembered Ogden from school. He was lanky and good in the field, but batting, hmm. Not sure. Ogden showed up with his own bat. He told me he'd won it in a pub in Dunedin and that it had belonged to a famous New Zealand player. I wondered whether I should put him into bat at all, but Ogden whispered to me that he'd been playing on deck all the way home. I knew Ogden wasn't a bluffer, but he was never the guy who got picked for the first team at school. Mm. Still, I had nothing to lose. Ogden hit a six with his first stroke. The he first one? Wild. And just when I thought it must be a fluke, he hit another and another. He was a machine. Wow. Ogden hit so many cricket balls out into the sea that we had to stop play. We <laughs> got out. It was a stunning win. And we carried Ogden back across the sand and into the camel. Even though he'd won the match pretty much single-handedly, he insisted it was all down to the bat and plenty of practice. Ogden was solid gold. That's so cool. What a nice memory. How's that? <laughs> what a great day that was. <laughs> and we've beaten Appledore every year since. Those poor chaps never did recover from Ogden's incredible batting. <laughs> right. So we are looking for a cricket ball. But it looks like barnacle if that even makes sense. Maybe it's in this crab pot? Or this crab trap? No? Never mind. All these muscles. Ooh, one big lobster. Do you know, I've never had lobster or crab or anything like that. Any kind of that seafood. Oh, is this it? In the barnacle cluster? There it is. 
Yay! Hey, Morris. Remember when we found one of these heavy balls on the beach and I dropped it on your toe? <laughs> Rude. But funny. Alright, let's get out of here. Ooh. Next. Oh, this guy on top of the getting the scent of Grenkins again, Morris. I'll pop up to let you know when we're close to one. Okay. <laughs> you hear my my pleasure. The Skylark. Bootlegger and music teacher. Wow. Get a guy who can do both. I remember when a young Ogden asked to join the Shelmerston Silver Band. I recognized his talent immediately. He could play anything, that lad. Literally anything. So cool. Eventually he settled on the sousaphone. Which he always insisted on playing with his lucky bronze mouthpiece. One evening after the silver band played a storming concert in the Camel, Ogden and Sally got it into their heads to go for a night swim in the harbour. You'll love and all that. Aww. Ogden left his mouthpiece behind, and when we came back the next morning to pack up, it had disappeared. It really rattled him. Ogden was worried he wouldn't be able to perform without it. But of course, next time we played, he was just as good as ever. Didn't need any lucky mouthpiece, sir Ogden. He could play anything, that lad. So cool. Ogden was so talented. A real virtuoso. Oh, I loved listening to him play. Oh, speak for yourself, Morris. It was a terrible racket. A terrible racket. No. Right, so we're looking for a mouthpiece then. Oh! There's an inside bit. I didn't realize. Am I looking to hear it all? No. Wait, I can click things? Roll of labels. Cool. Oh. Distillery note. Tony, as discussed, I dropped the temperature for the f of the first water to 61 degrees. Let's stick to our standard temperature for second and third waters, but go with a hotter sparge than usual. Oh, is this for, like, distillery stuff? Cool. Oh, is that a leveler? Hmm. Okay. Oh. Bootlegger still. I love that he has like a whole bootlegging situation right in the middle of town. Not discreet at all. But maybe that's the best uh best way to be. Oh oh <laughs> Whiskey funnels. Oh wait, his thing is right here. It's in the whiskey funnels. We're good. Oops. That's it! Yay! They seem to have been using it as a funnel. These bootleggers are very resourceful. Funnel! Ooh. Let's go back. Okay, so we're missing two people now. 
So we'll move on. Ropes, lines, boat hardware, safety equipment, maps, and charts. Can we go in here? Oh, it's just gonna be in here. Oh, that's the spirit leveler. We've seen that already. This is cool. I have. Oh my Jesus! <laughs> I'm so scared. Sorry if that scared anyone else. I did not expect that to be the case. Holy moly. Wow. I'm still trying to look out for that wizard seagull thing. I have no idea what they're talking about. Oh. I forgot to look at the back, but there's nothing here. There is supposed to be a Grenkin, but I'm like, not bothered. I like the inside of that though. All right, we already saw time for toast. I don't see any kind of wizard seagull. Audrey's seafood bar, yum. Kipper company, you know, I've never had kip kippers. <laughs> Someone with a selfie stick, we love to see it. Oh, there's somebody in there that we need. And there's a Grinkin that we will worry about another day. Sally, his loved one, Octon's widow. We were 14 when we started going out. Me and my friend Cassia had started a beach clean at the weekend, and Ogden turned up with his mate Godfrey. I had no idea Ogden liked me. He was the tallest in our year, and we all fancied him. By the time we reached the little cove at the north end of the beach, he'd asked me to come to a concert he was playing in. I said yes. No, I love that. We'd been going out for a few years when I applied to Floristry College on the mainland. I didn't tell Ogden. I didn't believe I'd get in and didn't want him to think I was trying to get away from him. Ogden might have looked mature and confident, but he was a gentle soul, not nearly as sure of himself as he looked. But I did get in and he was gutted. I felt terrible. I didn't want to hurt Ogden. He said he didn't mind, but I could see he was covering. My last week on Shelmerston was really hard. Every time I saw him, it felt so strained and I couldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. Finally, on my last night, I made a decision. I would take an apprenticeship at the garden center on the island instead, so we could stay together. It felt like the right thing to do. I would tell Ogden in the morning. But when I opened the door the next day, I found Ogden's sousaphone left on the doorstep. I was terrified. What did it mean? What had he done? I ran down to his house, my heart in my mouth. His mum, she never did like me, was a little bit smug. She told me Ogden had sailed off to New Zealand. He was headed to Christchurch, she said, and didn't know when he was coming back. Then she shut the door. Wow. I was more than a bit tearful, but, you know, looking back, I think we both needed to have a bit of an adventure. Hmm. But we they ended up together. With Sally during this period. We used to meet up quite often when she returned from Floristry College, and I was working at the museum. For a while, I thought maybe we would get together. But she always seemed a bit out of reach, mm. sort of distracted. Well, makes sense now. Mm. Life turns out in in weird ways, ways you would never expect, I think. Right, we have the sweets shop. Their house? Oh. 
There's his sousaphone. Cool. Oh, there's more, like this wall. Oh my god, stop! Their 20th wedding anniversary. They had a lot of, a lot of good years then. That's good. Silver fern. Dice! Oh, like Scrabble or something. I love a good Scrabble game. Or not Scrabble, I'm sorry, what is it? Yahtzee! That's what I'm thinking of. Radiator. Oh, and the cricket bat. Look at that. Aww. I do love that. It's a, such a small space, but it's lovely. No! I still want to look inside. I'm nosy. So... Wait, are these rooms? Where's the bedroom? <laughs> or- oh, okay, okay. I'm looking- Oh, wait. Mm. Cool, I- I really enjoy that. Wake up. Or be consumed by fire. Oh! Is he the only one noticing the volcano? Poor Darren is deeply worried about the volcano erupting. Since he lost his job as a fishmonger's assistant, he spends much of his time traipsing the quayside with his boards, urging people to wake up or be consumed by fire. Wow. Oh, the last guy. And the seaside shop. Hello, Godfrey. I remember we was walking home from school, a bunch of us, and I told him my granddad said the lad had a live battering camel living somewhere in the woods. <laughs> Everyone laughed. We know for a fact it does. Ogden didn't believe Someone would have seen him. He dared me to climb in and prove it. I told him he'd have to come with me. And sneaking past the big house, we were almost caught by the gamekeeper and had to run. Hell for leather for the woods. <laughs> we reached the trees out of breath. I was bent double and leant against a tree. Ogden had better breath control and he recovered quickly. He saw it first. The clouds parted. The moon shone down, and Ogden gasped, and then I did too. Was it? It was. Mm. The next day, we were kicking ourselves. We had no proof. No one was going to believe us. But we knew what we saw. I love it. So what? Uh, do we need like a little camel? A couple of years above these chaps at school. Oh, and he's right. No one believed them. We gave them so much stick. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. I don't know. This is just sweet. I like Morris remembering with them as well and having like a good laugh about I don't know old times. It's sweet, I think. Can I zoom in here? Oh, look up there. Nice house! I like- I love houses that are above shops. We actually live above a shop. It's great. Okay, let's see. What do we- where would a camel be in? This helmet? I don't know why, that just made sense to me. 
I mean, to be honest, I saw a giant camel's head uh, in front of the shop, and I was like, no, that's too simple. But you never know. Like... Oh, I mean... I don't even know what's going on anymore. That's it. Give it to me. This is this is it. This is the one. Let's go. I did one. Okay, I think that's my one that's my one gherkin Ger gherkin. <laughs> Grenkin. That's it. And there's 14 in this area. Oh my goodness. That's a bird person. Lucky dip. There it is. Porcelain camel. We did it. Camels are so obviously a made up animal. Humans will believe any old rubbish. It is not. Haven't you been listening? Yay! Oh, wait. Where did this come from? Ship bottle? Where did the ship bottle come from? Oh, Mary? Did we go see... Oh, we didn't come in here, did we? Oh, wait, oops, stop. How do I... Is it in here, maybe? Oops. Hello? No? Okay. Here? Is there a shit bottle in your crab lunch, ma'am? Can I, like, zoom in here? Thank you. Oops. Can I... Can I... There. I feel like a shit bottle would be on here. No? Hmm. No, okay. In the dishwasher? <laughs> no. I just like how detailed things are on the inside. It's great. Front counter. Anything in here? I mean, just cutlery, right? No. No ship bottles here. Anything in this limit? <laughs> okay. I don't think it's gonna be in the food. Yeah, I don't know where. Let's turn around. Oh my god, wait. <laughs> oh, here! Yay! And here was me trying to look in a. look in a lemon. <laughs> Model of HMS Indefatigable. I always wonder... Ogden made this as he journeyed back from New Zealand towards Shalmerton. Oh. Wait, there's one more? Oh, there's a- yeah, there's another one. I was wondering why there are only four circles. Let's see, who else remembers Ogden? This is a nice ship. Oh, 
Sally's there again. Okay, Sally. This peach-faced person. Sally, can we go around like that? There! Come on! Sally! I missed Ogden so much, and for the first month there was no letter at all. I took my place at college on the mainland without knowing how he was feeling. It was a shock how low it made me, even though I was working with flowers, my dream job. I threw myself into making friends and working as hard as I could. I wondered about him traveling the world without me and without his sousaphone, what he was doing, how he was feeling. Then the letters started arriving and it was amazing. Each one came with a penny from a different country. One from Valparaiso, another from Dakar. I rode back and told Ogden about my course, trips to Kew Gardens, which were amazing. And Ogden told me about his voyage, watching dolphins and flying fish, crossing the equator. Sometimes we were both lonely. We poured out our hearts to each other. In a funny way, I think the letters made us closer than ever. Hmm. I can make you feel closer than ever. When all you have is communication, like, there's something about it. It is really sad, but it's bittersweet in a way. I love this. When he arrived in Christchurch, he'd send me flowers pressed in his letters. I sent him a shell from home, and then he sent me a New Zealand halfpenny. It was my favorite. On one side was the head of a Maori tiki. Ogden told me it was lucky. Aww. I came back to the island, and when my father died, I opened up my own florist shop on the quay. I tucked the halfpenny under the front step for luck, polished up Ogden's sousaphone, and put it in the window. They both brought me luck. And the shop flourished. Aww. One day, Ogden showed up at the shop, completely out of the blue. He told me there was nowhere like Shelmiston, and no one like me. I was so thrilled to see him. I asked him to marry me there and then. He said yes. This is my notebook. This is my notebook. I love it. The Lord of Shelmiston. It always pulls people back when they try to move away. They were a lovely couple, Sally and Ogden. Aww. Right, so I'm looking for the penny. <gasps> there is a whole man in here. Hello, sir. You keep doing what you do. Donald Thompson. All right, Donald, I'll leave you to it. Is that, oh, is that a drink? What is that? What is this? Army man on a, on a drinks can. It's an army man on a drinks can. You know, I feel like this could be one of those riddles. An army man on a drinks can. What's in here? Nothing? Pack it! Okay. An army man on a drinks can. Vernon Russet. Okay. Oh, I feel like there'd be a penny in here, right? Ah, uh, there it is. Yeah, one good thing about being dead, I'll never have to deal with counting change again. <laughs> Hey, there are positives to everything, right? Cool. Uh, 
Ah, uh, yes. A very distinctive odor indeed. I reckon I can find him from this. Here I come, Ogden. I'm gonna find you, Ogden. I don't want to hold really sparky. Because I feel like this army man on a beer can is a thing. Hard sell, Houdini cephalopod, royal tuber, the worms, the wizard seagull. Oh, maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. Darn it! Me? Are the worms just worms? Because there are worms in the compost bin. Hard sell. The wizard seagull. No. We could try to find the worms. <laughs> Alright, let's go! Combo's been! Yay! Oh, I did. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Solve more, solve more, solve more. Oh, okay, Mr. Whitstable. I'll try. Oh, for goodness sake, Morris, we just don't have time for this right now. Happy riddle hunting, riddle friends. Great. <laughs> Yay! I thought I saw an inflatable camel. Or something, I think it said something about an inflatable, but now I can't remember. Well, let me just see one more time. Will it be crossed off what we found? Oh yeah, okay. Hard sell. Houdini cephalopod. I don't, I haven't seen like any squids or... Isn't a cephalopod like a squid or an octopus or something? Royal Tuber and Wizard Seagull. I haven't. Do you know what? I didn't look at all at the um. What is it? This is it. This little place, Seaside Shop. What is what is in here? Oh, little Grinklins, Grinkins. That's cute. It was in here. What's in here? Anything that sounds like the things they were talking about? No. Alright, just making sure. I mean, these are inflatables, but... Lar Laird's famous camel? Do you think it could be considered royalty? I don't know if it'd be called a tuber, though. You know what? We can figure this out later. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's release Sparky. Here we go. This is so cool. It's beautiful. Oh, we have to go around. Okay, all right. This way, y'all. <gasps> he even has his hat. Oh, and his little sousaphone. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> to see you, Morris. 
Oh, it's great to see you too, mate. Have a stretch, Ogden. We have a question for you. Sparky! Owner of the very finest singing voice on the island. What can I do? <laughs> well, it's about the custodian. We need a replacement. Ah, yes. I've heard that volcano rumbling. Poor Aggie must be very tired. Yes, she is. We need a replacement. Oh. Oh, you want me to be the custodian? Well, I, I, I'm honored, but uh, I can't. Are you sure? The island is in dire need. I know, and I sympathize, but Sally is the other half of me. I need to watch over her. Everything else may be changing, but she's my constant, and I'm hers. I need to go into the West with her when it's her time. Yes, I... Oh. Yeah, I understand. You two always did have an enviable connection. Mm. We were very lucky to find each other. And I'm still lucky just, just to watch over her. Makes this place still feel a bit like home, even as it changes. So I'm going to stay. Uh, but listen, once you found the custodian, come back and enjoy a sniff of that beer in the camel with me, eh? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure, Hogden. Well, uh, see you around. That's lovely. All right, so not Ogden, but he had, he had a lovely reason, didn't he? After all these years, Ogden still carries that torch for Sally. I wish I'd been so lucky. Things I should have done. You were busy with the museum, Morris. And you did walks, and you did fetch, and belly rubs, and... <laughs> yeah, all right, all right, yes. I was very busy. Thank you for reminding me. You did plenty. But now you need to find the next custodian. Hey, how long has Aggie been custodian? A little while now. You've met her, actually. I have? Well, her body, anyway. In the museum. What? Her, her body? In, in, in the museum? Oh, wait! That's right, Morris. The bog lady. The bog lady of Shelmerston. What, that's Aggie? Mm-hmm. Well, that's her body, anyway. Her spirit is all around us, of course. But Aggie is Bronze Age. Uh, Three thousand years. She's been custodian all that time. Yep. Well, no wonder she's tired. More tired every minute. We need to get to the next prospect. Greg Litherland at the campsite. Hmm. Greg. Okay. Ooh, he sounds a little apprehensive, maybe, about Greg? I don't know. This was good. Um, we are going to stop there. I really enjoyed the seaside town and I can't wait to just go on a pure hunt for Grinkins because there's, I think they said 14 just in that one area. But no, the story was really nice. I really like Ogden and Sally's relationship. I think it's so cute. Um, but yeah, that's all for me. Thank you for watching up until this point. I can't wait to see how this ends. I think we have, what, two more people to go through? I think two more people to go through and then the end of the story. So stay tuned for that. Um, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next part. Goodbye.